Beside your heading, I want you to put uh, another word, which is a bit of a weird word. You've probably never heard it before. Um, at least not in a mathematical context. Because um, you don't ever need to know what it's called, despite the fact that you've actually been doing it for quite some time. We're going to do it today. Uh, continuation. It's a very unassuming title. The idea is very simple. You can start with an idea, a very simple concept, and it works in like a little area in mathematics. And then we think, well, what about outside that area that we designed it for? Can we continue that idea outside its original definition? So we actually did this very, very recently when we were doing binomial theorem. I introduced this guy. What, what is this guy again? This is the factorial function, right? It has an exclamation mark because it grows really fast. And we started with a definition for this, right? What was our definition algebraically for n factorial? I'll give you a clue. It starts with n. What comes next? n minus 1. And then 1 comes after that. n minus 2. And by now, you've established the pattern, so you say, okay, this is going to go on for some amount of time, dot, 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 and how does it end? 3, 2, and 1. Sorry, I'll just wait so that everyone's ready, because we're not. This is where we began with the factorial function. And if you put in numbers like 5 or 10 or 100, it behaves just fine, right? Uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it's like, cool. This is what we would call a well-defined function. Uh, it makes sense. We understand how it works. Okay. However, then I posed to you this problem, which initially seemed like sort of mathematical curiosity, but ended up being very, very important for us. I said, hey, what about this? Right? Now, the factorial function is meant to be for positive numbers, right? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whole numbers as well. So when you look at this, you're like, well, it kind of breaks this definition, right? It starts after where this ends. So we puzzled over it a little bit, but then we thought, no, wait, if you think logically about how all the factorials fit together, we can continue this, continue it, and find a value for 0 factorial, which was, of course, one. Very good. One. So we continued. Sorry, I'll just wait until everyone's ready because we're not. Thank you. We continued a simple idea to somewhere which was a bit unusual. And we've been doing this all throughout maths, all the way from kindergarten up to now, you start with a simple concept, and then you say, hey, you know how you can do this, right? Subtraction, that's a simple idea. Well, what about this? So we took the natural number system, the counting numbers, and we continued it. We said, well, what about over here? And then we just continued to explore that idea. So what this is about is about continuing the idea of sine, cos, and tan outside of one of these, right? This is where sine, cos, and tan begin. Just like this is where m factorial begins. You can say, for this angle over here, you can label all of your sides opposite hypotenuse adjacent. And so long as your angle is less than 90 degrees, it fits in there, and you can come up with your definition for sine theta, cos theta, tan theta. Okay? But I want to be able to do more than 90 degrees because there are lots of angles in the world that are more than 90 degrees. So that's what angles of any magnitude means, right? Not just limited, not just restricted to acute angles, uh, but being able to look at any angle we like, okay? So we introduced a shape and I reintroduced it to you yesterday. Do you remember, and you need to draw this with me, if you have a set of axes on the Cartesian plane, and if you draw yourself a nice big circle, like so. If your circle is centered on the origin and you have a radius of one, then we call this guy, do you remember? We call the unit circle, right?
Sorry, do you guys want to finish outside? If it's important, it's fine. You can talk about it elsewhere. I don't mind. I just don't want to have to keep on stopping so everyone can listen. That's all. That's a serious question. It's not a talk. Do you want to... Are you sure? You're not going anywhere? Okay. On the inner circle, at the moment, no triangles, okay? But we can smuggle a right angle triangle in there, and then we can continue this idea of cos and tan outside of angles that are acute, okay? So let's smuggle the triangle in. Start at the origin, and just to make things simple for us, we'll start in this quadrant here, one, two, three, four, where all of your numbers are positive. Your x values are positive, you turn to the right. Your y values are positive because you're going up. Okay. So if you take a point like that, and you recognize that you'll have a right angle in there, and let's just define the angle between the positive x-axis and your radius, we'll call that guy theta. I hope this is ringing some bells. Okay. If you do this, Sine, cos, and tan are in that triangle, right? Remember, this is the unit circle, right? So what's the length of the hypotenuse? Radius. Uh, it's the radius, which is 1 in this case, because I made it the unit circle, right? So we'll call that guy 1. Now, just off to the side here, you can think about sine, cos, and tan now in this triangle, because if the coordinates of this are some x value, some y value, right? Think about what sine theta would be. Sine theta. Sine theta is opposite on hypotenuse. Do you agree? So it's this length on one, which is just this length, right? Well, that's the that's the y coordinate. Do you agree with that? So it's the y coordinate divided by one. In exactly the same way, if you think about cos theta, that's which side is that? Actually, I haven't drawn it. Yeah, it's that, hor it's that horizontal one there, right? So I might draw that in, maybe you can too, to complete the right angle triangle. And it's the adjacent side, so it's this on one, right? So the cos theta ratio is going to be that horizontal length on one, which is x on one, okay? So now, if you have a look at those guys, right? What you've got now is a definition for x and y in terms of the trig functions. So instead of calling this coordinate x comma y, I'm going to call it cos theta sine theta. Okay? So if the x's and the y's correspond to cos and sine, then now I can actually get rid of this triangle, and it's still true, right? If I change this angle theta and like move it up, I'd form a new triangle, but the coordinates are still going to be the same. The lovely thing about this is it immediately tells you where everything is on the circle. For instance, simple example. Let's go to somewhere like here, right on that spot there. Okay. What would theta be at that spot if I moved around the point until it was here? Now you won't get a triangle, remember? You won't get a triangle. Because theta is going to be when your dot is there? Zero. Exactly right. Remember, it's the angle between the positive x-axis and wherever you put your radius. Well, if you put your radius on the positive x-axis, there's no angle between them, so it's zero, right? But that means I can understand what cos of zero and sine of zero are. Cos zero degrees, sine zero degrees. You can't do these in a triangle, right? You can't do these in a triangle. But you can do it here. What are the coordinates of this spot? What's the x-coordinate? I've actually written it right on the next to my finger. It's one. What's the y-coordinate? Zero. So when theta equals zero, your spot on the circumference goes there. Here's cos and here's sine. Cos of zero is one. And sine of zero is zero. And you can get your calculator to convert that if you like. Uh, if you put in really, really tiny values of theta, like cos of 0 0.00001 or something like that, you're going to approach 1. But in a right angle triangle, you can't actually get there, right? Because then your sides cease to exist. But on the circle, you can. Because every point on the circumference has coordinates. So therefore, it's got a cos theta and a sine theta. In exactly the same way, let's take this guy. Let's move him rather than down. Let's move him up to here, right? 
What would theta be if I took the radius and moved it around? It's going to be 90 degrees, right? Because it's between the positive x-axis and I measure up. Now, 90 degrees doesn't fit inside a right angle triangle, right? But it does fit on the circle. What are the coordinates of this thing? Have a look. I'm already started. Yeah, x, x is going to be 0, and I've already put the y coordinate on there. Now, you told me the angle was 90 degrees. So from here, I can read. That guy there is cos. So cos of 90 degrees is 0. And you can check that on the calculator. And sine of 90 degrees is going to be 1. 